let's study 10th standard ICSC physics chapter 1 moment of force equilibrium first let's understand about moment of force and equilibrium topic 1 translational and rotational motion translational motion is the type of motion in which all the particles of the body cover an equal distance whereas in rotational motion they don't translational motion is of two types rectilinear and curvilinear here we have a definition of rectilinear motion which is a type of translational motion in the linear motion the object travels in a straight line like this but what is more important for this chapter is understanding rotational motion which happens this way there is a force applied there is a pivot which is a fixed point and the axis of rotation passes through this and we have a rotation so when a body is pivoted at a point and the force is applied at a suitable point it rotates about the axis so the force is having a turning effect and this turning effect of the force can be measured with moment of force now the turning effect of force depends on two factors of course it would de depend on how powerful is the force more the force applied more will be the turning effect but it also depends on how far it is being applied from the axis of rotation for example when you open a door you apply a force far away from the hinges the door knob or the handle is always at maximum distance from this axis of rotation that way it is easy to rotate the door imagine if you would apply the force let's say at point q or closer to this axis of rotation it would take much greater effort to open or close the door and that's the reason why door handles are always at the edge far away from the hinges because that way the turning effect of force is maximum a turning effect of force is nothing but the moment of force and it is also called torque so there are two factors affecting the turning effect of force first the magnitude of the force and second is the perpendicular distance of the line of action of the force from the axis of rotation or the pivoted point so here let's say f is 10 newton and the perpendicular distance between the axis of rotation or the pivoted point and the line of action of the force is let's say 1 meter so the total moment of force is 10 into 1 10 newton meter so that's the si unit of moment of force or torque newton meter so the product of the force and the distance the perpendicular distance is the definition of the moment of force the cgs unit as you might have guessed is dying centimeter and the relationships have to be learned remember newton meter cannot be substituted with joule joule is used only for scalar quantities like work or energy whereas torque is a vector quantity so we will use only newton meter not joule for that now the rotational motion can be of two types clockwise or anti-clockwise by convention we take anti-clockwise motion as positive and clockwise as negative so if the moment of force is providing anti-clockwise turning effect it will be positive in the numericals which we will solve later now there are two ways to change the direction of rotation motion first change the point of application of the force you can see that the force acting here is from left to right and even here it is from left to right but the point of application of the force has been changed hence this rotates anti-clockwise and this rotates clockwise a second way of changing the direction of rotation is by changing the direction of force look at this example the point of application of the force is exactly same but the direction of force has been changed this is in opposite direction compared to this and hence the anti-clockwise motion now becomes clockwise understand that the direction of force is different from the direction of rotational motion next there are some common examples where the moment of force is applicable a give reason can be asked regarding why is a door handle far away from the hinges so we simply have to say that more the perpendicular distance from the axis of rotation to the line of action of the force more is the moment of force that is torque and easier it is for us to rotate it the same give reason sentence can be used for other answers for example why does the upper circular stone of a hand flower 
grinder have a handle near its rim so in this stone you can see the handle is at the rim which can be used to rotate the stone on top of another stone and grind the wheat between them if this handle was closer to the center then the perpendicular distance between the line of action of the force and the pivot would be small so the moment of force would also be small requiring a greater effort at our end which won't be so convenient so it's better to keep it far away at the edge at the periphery the third point can be cancelled now the fourth one now in a bicycle we know that the foot pedal is attached to a wheel and that wheel is attached to the rear wheel with the help of chains this is the gear system we can't have the foot pedal directly connected to the rear wheel because of the way in which our our legs bend when we sit on the cycle a bicycle if the foot pedal is connected to this it will it won't be a bicycle it would be a unicycle so the manufacturers always try to maximize this distance between the axle of the wheel and the foot pedal this way the rider can get maximum torque making it more convenient to ride the bicycle the same reason is applicable for spanner handles being so long so that is also a give reason and even a jack screw which is used to lift heavy loads such as a vehicle even they have a long arm so that less effort is required to raise the heavy load such machines are force multipliers which you will study in the chapter called machines here using a less effort you can lift a heavy load but there is a sacrifice you have to make your speed of lifting the car would be quite slow which is fine as far as uh, it's convenient to lift it now remember all these rotational motions are only because of two forces acting simultaneously together they are called a couple for example look at this tap when we open or close this tap you can see there are two equal and opposite forces which are acting parallel to each other but not in the same line they are called a couple every rotational motion is because of a couple now first of all why should they not be in a same straight line well imagine this wrench you are using your two hands to apply the two forces but both are anti clockwise as far as rotation is concerned so there are two forces equal forces let's say 5 newton 5 newton and they are parallel to each other they are in opposite direction and they are not in the same straight line if one force was here and the other was here they would cancel each other and there would be no rotation but they are not in a same straight line so there is some distance between them let's say it's 1 meter and this is 5 newton 5 newton here as well so now they constitute a couple and bring about a rotation so the definition is two equal and opposite parallel forces not acting along the same line form a couple and how do we calculate the couple well it is a force into the perpendicular distance between the two forces so it will be 5 into 1 that is answer 5 newton meter which is anti clockwise but what if you use only one hand to apply this 5 newton force and you don't use your second hand you don't apply the 5 newton force out here will it rotate now only with one hand for example can you rotate the steering wheel with just one hand yes you can but in that case where is the couple a couple is required for rotational motion well at this pivot there is always a force of reaction taking place in the opposite direction to this force of action it is also equal to 5 newton so that is the couple although this 5 newton force is not being applied by us however since it is passing through the axis of rotation this force is totally useless as far as bringing about a rotation is concerned its moment of force is zero because 5 into 0 the distance being zero is zero so what will be the moment of force due to this 5 newton force well it will be 5 into the distance which is half a meter so that would just be 2.5 newton meter so now you see why it's always easier to rotate something using two hands or two fingers rather than just one take the example of a steering wheel so here both your hands are applying forces in the opposite direction although the rotation is in the same direction here it is clockwise so if you use two hands 
to rotate the steering wheel, it is far more convenient than using just one hand. Because when you are using two hands, you are explicitly or clearly providing both the forces to form a couple to rotate it. But if you use only one hand, then too there will be a couple, but the total moment of couple will be half of what you could have produced using two hands, similar to what example I just gave. That is why in each of these cases, it's always better to use two fingers or two hands. So moment of couple is nothing but the total moment of force. And this is the formula for that. The next topic is equilibrium of bodies. You can see that this object is stationary. Suppose if it's kept on a table, it doesn't move about. It doesn't even fall down, even though there is a weight acting on it downwards. But if a force is acting downwards, why is there no acceleration? Why is there no motion? Well, that's because the surface on which it is kept provides a normal reaction force in the upward direction. So they cancel each other out. So when the net forces are acting on it, which are zero, then we say it is in a static equilibrium. So equilibrium definition is when the number of forces acting on a body produce no change in its state of rest or of linear or rotational motion, then the body is in equilibrium. That means it continues its state of rest or it continues its state of uniform linear motion or uniform circular motion without any change in its speed. Then we say it is in equilibrium. And static equilibrium, as I said, happens when the body is at rest, even though many forces are acting on it. Take the example of a beam balance. Even that is a GR, just like the book paragraph is a GR. In a beam balance, again, we have two pans. The weight on this pan is providing a clockwise moment. This is the pivot out here. And the weight on this pan is providing an anticlockwise moment. If the total anticlockwise moment is equal to the total clockwise moment, then the net torque is zero. So again, there will be no rotation. It won't tilt in either direction. And we say it is in static equilibrium, not moving at all. Dynamic equilibrium, on the other hand, is defined as the equilibrium when a body remains in the same state of motion, either translational or rotational, under the influence of several forces. Example, when a raindrop is falling down towards the earth. Now you may imagine that initially it would accelerate because of the acceleration due to gravity. But you see, as it falls down, the air friction increases, which resists its downward motion. So what are the forces acting on it? We have a downward gravitational force, which is nothing but the weight. And we have an upward frictional force with the air and also buoyancy of the air. If they balance each other out, that doesn't mean that it will come to a stop in the middle of air. It would continue falling down, but with a uniform velocity. It would no longer accelerate because the net force is zero. So this is an example of a dynamic equilibrium. It is moving, but it is an equilibrium. It is not static. So whenever the net force is zero, there is no acceleration. If there is an acceleration, that means some force is acting on it. So similarly, if an aeroplane is moving at a constant height, it's neither landing nor taking off. It means that its weight is balanced by the upward lift, you know, under the wings of a plane, the air exerts an upward lift due to the aerodynamic shape of the aeroplane. So again, it is in a dynamic equilibrium. And if its engine force forward is equal to the air friction force backward, then again, it would move with a constant velocity. The third example is about rotational motion. If a stone is tied at the end of a string and it is rotated with a uniform speed, then we say it is in dynamic equilibrium. Now imagine this circular motion of the stone tied to a string. If the string is broken, immediately the stone will fly away in a direction which is tangential to that circular motion at that point. That means the stone wished to travel straight. Its velocity is in this direction at this point. But because of the tension in the string, which is, being, which is acting on it inwards, it is trapped in a circular motion. It can't escape it as long as there is a centripetal force acting towards the center of the circular motion. So at every point, there is some centripetal force keeping it in the orbit. And that force is always acting towards the center of the circular motion. So even though the speed is uniform, you can see the direction of velocity keeps on changing at every point. And velocity being a vector quantity, 
This means that velocity is changing even though speed is constant. So every circular motion is an accelerated motion because the force is being applied. The net force here is not zero. There is a force called centripetal force which in this case is being provided by the tension in the string acting on this stone. So do we still call it dynamic equilibrium? Yes, we do. You see, in the definition, it's not mentioned that the net force has to be zero. It's just mentioned that it should continue its rotational motion with a uniform speed. So in this example, even though the velocity is changing, the linear velocity is changing, the angular velocity is not changing. It's constant. There is an, a linear acceleration, but the angular acceleration is not present. So it is an equilibrium. So all rotational motion, even those of heavenly bodies or the electron around, around the nucleus of an atom, they are all examples of dynamic rotational equilibrium. Now the conditions for equilibrium, number one, net force should be zero, which will bring about translational equilibrium. And the total clockwise moment should be equal to total anticlockwise moment. And you know, clockwise is negative and anticlockwise is positive. So the net torque would be zero. That would bring about rotational equilibrium. So for rotational equilibrium, only the second condition is applicable, not the first condition. Because in rotational motion, net force cannot be zero. Net force is greater than zero. Now, if something is in equilibrium, clearly the total clockwise moment will be equal to the total anticlockwise moment. This is called the principle of moments, which will be used while studying numericals. Hi students, this is AJ sir. If you like this video, press the like button. If you would like to enroll for my online test series or online lectures, email me or message me on Instagram. Check the description for more information.